This is the Feldenkrais podcast, and we'll be doing a lesson lying on the floor. You'll be lying on your back or lying on your side. So have a pad or two or a folded towel, something that you can place under your head when you're lying on your side so you can lie on your side comfortably. So let's begin on our backs and rest on your back. Either have your knees bent and your feet standing or rest on your back with your legs lying long. And rest here on your back and notice the way you make contact with the floor. Notice which parts of you touch the floor. Get a sense of this and where you touch the floor, what feels heavy. And please roll onto your right side. And place some support under your head. You can use a folded towel or a pad or two. And place it under your head so you can rest on your right side comfortably. So rest on your right side. Have your knees bent in front of you. It's almost as if you were sitting in a chair. So the knees are in front of your hips. And like this, take your left arm to the ceiling and do a movement of rotating the arm inward and outward. So you can imagine you're lying on your right side. Your left arm is oriented toward the ceiling. And in this position, imagine with your left hand that you're holding a light bulb. And holding the light bulb screw the light bulb in and out. So that requires your arm to turn around itself. See about rotating the arm around itself many times. So just rotate the arm inward and outward. Notice how much movement is there. How easily does the arm turn around itself. And you'll notice that the arm turns around itself in an inward direction and also in an outward direction. Get a sense of the ease of that movement. And then rest the arm on your hip. So the arm again is long and straight. And do the movement, the same movement like this. So the arm, the left arm is long on your hip, the elbow is completely straight. And just do that same rotational movement. Rotate the arm inward. Rotate the arm outward. As the arm rotates inward, you'll feel the shoulder rotate inward at all. As the arm rotates outward, you'll feel the shoulder rotate outward. So listen to what the arm does as you rotate the arm inward and outward. And then one more time, bring the arm to the ceiling. So the fingers are, are facing the ceiling. And imagine holding a light bulb and just turn the arm around itself. And see how well does the arm rotate. Get a sense of that movement. And just very slowly very gently, in very small, simple movements, rotate inward and outward. Allow the head to follow the movement of the arm. So as you rotate the arm inward, and inward will be the direction where the shoulder comes a little closer to the floor in front of you. And as you rotate the arm outward, that would be the direction of the shoulder coming closer to the floor behind you. So as you rotate the arm inward and outward, allow the head to follow that movement so that the head looks a bit toward the ceiling as you rotate the arm outward. So the head rotates to look a little bit toward the floor in front of you as you rotate the arm inward. So explore that rotational movement of the arm and allow the head to follow it. 
So every time the arm rotates outward, you're looking a bit toward the ceiling. And when you rotate the arm inward, your head turns toward the floor. So as well as the arm rotating, you'll start to feel that your chest is rolling a bit. So the back could roll toward the floor. And you're rolling so your chest could roll to the floor in front of you. So the arm is rotating. It's as if you're holding a light bulb and you're screwing the light bulb inward and outward. But then the the movement's expanding so that the arm and the shoulder rotate as well. And you'll notice you can expand it further so the head is rolling, turning toward the ceiling, turning toward the floor. Please roll onto your back and take a rest. And notice as you lie on your back and rest here, notice if you observe a difference in the connection that the two sides make with the floor. How does the right side make contact with the floor and how is that different compared to the left side? We moved, we did some movements with one side and not with the other side. See if you can sense as a result of those movement explorations, is there a difference in the connection that two sides make with the floor. For example, maybe you'll notice that one shoulder makes more contact with the floor compared to the other shoulder. Maybe there'll be a sense that one arm is longer or one arm is heavier. Does one leg lie longer or closer to the ground? Observe any sensations that you might observe. And please roll onto your left side. And now resting on the left side, Again, let both knees bend in front of you so your knees are in front of your hips to some degree. And you can place the folded towel or the pads under your head so you can lie more comfortably on your side. Resting on your left side, Please take your right arm to the ceiling. So reach the right arm toward the ceiling. When you're lying on your left side, that means that you're taking your right arm out to the right. And that will orient the right hand toward the ceiling. And in this position, rotate the arm around itself. And notice how you do that. You'll observe, probably observe that there's a difference in this arm. Does the arm rotate around itself more easily or less easily? See if you can sense how it's a little bit different on this side. So play with this idea of just moving, turning the arm around itself. The idea is to imagine that your right hand is holding a light bulb and that light bulb would be fixed in the ceiling and your fingers would be holding the light bulb and you just turn the light bulb as if to screw it out. And as you turn the light bulb, the whole arm turns around itself. So explore that. Rotate the arm around itself. Turn the arm inward. And turn the arm outward. And just see if this movement can be very fluid and light and simple. Also notice how much of the arm rotates. 
right? Is all the movement in the wrist? How about the elbow? Does the elbow rotate around itself inward and outward? And the shoulder, does the shoulder rotate inward and outward? Or maybe all the movements in the hand? How is the rotation distributed through the arm and the shoulder? Get a sense of that. Rest the right arm. And lie the right arm long on the hip. So it might be your forearm that makes contact with the hip. And the arm or the hand might just hang off the side. So you're lying on your right side. The, the right arm is long on your hip. Do the same movement on your side. Rotate the arm inward. Rotate the arm outward. So the arm turns around itself. But this time the, the arm is long at your side. And you're rolling the arm inward and outward. There's a lot of ways to do this. One is to have the arm a little bit off the hip, maybe an inch off the hip. And if you rotate the arm inward and outward with the arm off the hip, you'll notice there's a lot of muscular work involved in holding the arm up. So see if you can rest the arm so that the arm is just, the full weight of the arm is resting on the hip. And like that, rotate the arm around itself inward and outward. So it's that same movement, turning the arm around itself. And to make this movement easier, play with turning the head to follow the movement. So as the arm rotates outward, let the head turn to look toward the ceiling. As the arm rotates inward, turn the head to look toward the floor. So you're turning the head, and the movement of the head is congruent with the movement of the shoulder. Rotate the arm outward, which means that your back is getting a bit, your shoulder, your right shoulder is getting closer to the floor behind you. Your head turns toward the ceiling. When you rotate the arm inward, the head looks toward the floor in front of you a bit. And just turn the head to amplify the movement of the arm, rolling inward, rolling outward. Now there's two ways to do this movement. Another way is as you rotate the arm inward, you could look upward. So try the second way as well. So rotate the arm inward. That means your shoulder moves a little bit toward the floor in front of you as your nose turns a bit toward the ceiling. And then rotate the arm outward. That means the back moves toward the floor, the shoulder moves to the floor behind you as you turn the head to look downward in front of you. So the head and the shoulder move toward each other and then apart from each other. When the shoulder and the head move apart from each other, the shoulder is moving toward the floor behind you and the head is moving toward the floor in front of you and then the shoulder and head move toward each other as your head looks toward the ceiling and then move the head and shoulder apart from each other and toward each other and notice how well does the arm rotate when you rotate the arm in conjunction with the head in this way. How is it different? And then go back. Rotate the arm so that the arm rotates inward and the head looks toward the floor. Rotate the arm outward as the right shoulder rolls behind you toward the floor behind you a little bit and the head looks toward the ceiling. So rotate the arm together with the head and see if that makes the movement a little easier or a little lighter. 
discover this rotation and feel the freedom of the arm rotating around itself. Has that improved to some degree? Test it out. Take the right arm to the ceiling and rotate the arm inward and outward and sense how that's coming along. How well does the arm turn around itself? Notice that. And please roll onto your back and rest. resting on your back. Notice, are you lying a little more symmetrically? What's different about the areas that make contact with the floor? Notice the connection that the right shoulder blade makes with the floor. Compare that to how the left shoulder blade rests on the floor. Is it a little more similar than it was a moment ago? Sense the connection the back makes to the floor, which areas of the back touch the floor. Listen to this. Please, once again, roll onto your right side. And resting on your right side with both knees bent in front of your hips, take your left arm to the ceiling. And once again, rotate the arm inward and rotate the arm outward. Notice how is that movement coming along? Rest the left arm in front of you on the floor. So the left hand is resting on the floor and your elbows bent. And please take your left knee, point your left knee to the ceiling. So you lift your left knee toward the ceiling. And if you're able to rest the knee over your hip, that means your left foot would be off the floor and it's just dangling in the air near your bottom. Okay, so play with the idea of just taking that left knee and pointing the left knee in the direction of the ceiling and letting the foot hang in the air. So the knee is bent. And like this, with your left knee pointing to the ceiling, see if you can do the same movement with the leg that we just did with the arm. So turn the left knee around itself. See if you can rotate the left leg around itself. So this this might be a challenging idea and it's it's an interesting thing because in the Feldenkrais method a, a lot of what we're doing is this idea of of exploring and playing and inventing almost movement. So see what that means to you, right? What does it mean to turn the leg around itself? What sort of movement are you doing with your left leg in space? Some people are making a circle with the knee, but actually it's turning the leg around itself. The same thing we just did with the arm. See, what does that look like? What are you doing with your leg? And then rest the leg in front of you so the two knees are stacked one on top of the other, the two feet are stacked one on top of the other, and you're again resting on your right side. Now take the, the left arm to the ceiling and come back to rotating the arm around itself and having moved the leg, having moved the left leg, can you sense that maybe the arm can rotate a little more easily? So rotate the arm inward and outward. Notice how is that coming along?
And is there some improvement in the quality of this rotational movement? And bring the left arm down, rest the left hand in front of you on the floor. And once again, take the left knee to the ceiling, have the left knee bent, and rotate the left leg around itself again. Come back to that same movement so that the left leg turns inward and turns outward. So to make it maybe a little clearer and maybe a little easier, as you rotate the leg inward, roll the pelvis inward. As you rotate the leg outward, roll the pelvis outward so that the pelvis and the leg are moving together inward and outward. You'll feel your pelvis rolls backward as if you were rolling to lie on your back a little bit. And then the pelvis rolls forward as if you were rolling toward your belly a bit. And as the pelvis rolls backward, the leg rotates outward. And when you roll forward with the pelvis, the knee, the leg turns inward. So actually your foot is describing a semicircle in the air. Right? A little semicircle. So there's not a full circle. Go ahead, rest the leg in front of you on the floor. And just notice the sensation in the left leg. Please take your left arm to the ceiling and please take your left knee to the ceiling. So the arm and the leg point toward the ceiling. And now, see if having the leg and the arm, is it a little clearer what to do with your left leg? So turn the arm around itself. Let the arm rotate inward and let the arm rotate outward. Imagine again that idea of holding the light bulb with your hand and the arm turning around itself. See if you can imagine doing exactly that same movement with the leg. So the leg is turning inward and outward. The movement might be less um, beautiful or less clear. It might be a little jumpy. But see what you can do. Can you use the arm doing the same movement to help the leg know what to do? Can the leg do the movement that the arm's doing? and then rest on your side and take a break from that. As you know, because this is the Feldenkrais method, you're taking breaks any time that you want a break. So take pauses, rest from the movement, and then come back to it at any point. And please roll onto your back and rest. And once again, resting on your back, sense, is there a difference in how the whole left side makes contact with the floor compared to how the whole right side makes contact with the floor? See if you can determine, is one side of you touching the floor more clearly or is it heavier? Is something longer or lighter? See if you can sense differences from one side to the other. And roll on to your left side. So resting on your left side, both knees bent in front of you, the two knees stacked one on top of the other, the two feet, the right foot stacked on top of the left foot, the two hips stacked on top of each other. So you're resting on your left side. Please take your right arm to the ceiling and rotate the arm inward and outward. Notice how well does the arm turn around itself now. Remember that, the quality of this movement, the amplitude of the movement, and then please take the right arm and rest it on the floor in front of you. Bring the right knee to the ceiling, the right foot's dangling in the air, and the knee is pointed to the ceiling, right? The knee is pointed toward, the kneecap's pointing toward the ceiling. And now rotate 
the leg around itself. Think back to what the arm did. What did the right arm do in the air? Imagine that movement of rotating the arm, that movement of screwing a light bulb in or screwing a light bulb out. And see if you can do that same movement with the leg. In the end, it doesn't matter what movement you're doing with the leg because whatever you're doing, you're moving the head of the femur in the hip joint. And there's some, there's some difference, there's some changing in the habitual use of the leg. And so there'll be an improvement in the movement of the arm. But see if you can clarify that idea of moving the leg the way you just move the arm. But keep the arm down and just play with, move the leg in different ways. Rotate it around itself. Take the leg Rotate it inward and rotate it outward. Bring the arm, arm um, bring the leg down, and take a rest on your left side. And please take the right arm to the ceiling and the left knee to the ceiling. So the left foot is dangling in the air, the left knee, the right knee is pointing to the ceiling and the right arm is pointing to the ceiling. Rotate the arm and leg inward, rotate the arm and leg outward. So let the head follow the movement of the arm and the leg. So let everything rotate inward and everything rotate outward. The head turns to look toward the ceiling as the arm rotates outward, as the leg rotates outward. And then the arm rotates inward as the leg rotates inward, as the head looks downward. So everything is rolling congruently. In fact, you're rolling a little bit toward being on your back, and then you're rolling a little bit toward being a little bit toward your belly. You're rolling on that left side and you'll feel this changing contact with the floor as you roll inward and outward. The leg turning inward and outward, the arm rotating inward and outward, and the head looking toward the ceiling and the head looking toward the floor. See if you can rotate the, the leg more easily with the arm here. Does it make a little more sense? Is it a little clearer? Notice what that's like. And then rest your right arm and leg in front of you on the floor. Take a break. In fact, roll onto your back and take a break. Take a full break on the floor. And again, feel that contact with the floor and sense how that's changing. Observe yourself lying here. Sense the parts of your back touching the floor. Listen to your breathing. Is something heavier lying here? Are you longer or lighter? Are you wider somehow? Get a sense of the different areas that make contact with the floor and see if this has changed compared to when we began class. And please roll on to your left side. Bend both knees in front of yourself. Stack the right knee on top of the left knee and the right foot on top of the left foot. Please take your right arm to the ceiling and take your right knee to the ceiling. And this time, rotate the right leg inward as you rotate the right arm outward, then take the leg 
outward as the arm goes inward. So see if you can rotate the leg and the arm in different directions. So the arm goes in one direction as the leg goes in the opposite, and then you change it. So you're rotating the leg opposite the rotation of the arm. See if you can discover how to do that. Take the leg and the arm in different directions and feel what has to happen. Notice what occurs in the ribs, in the chest. Feel how you have to use your back. Can you do it as you breathe? Can you keep breathing as you rotate the arm opposite the leg? Feel what happens in that right hip joint and in the right shoulder. Leave it and roll and rest on your side. Rest on your side for a moment, but bring the right arm down and the right leg down. And pause. Take a rest like this on your side. And then bring the arm and leg back up so the right knee points to the ceiling. The right foot is dangling in the air and the right arm is pointing to the ceiling. Rotate the arm and leg in the same direction. And notice as you rotate the arm inward, you can roll a little forward so that the head looks toward the floor in front of you. You can rotate the arm and leg outward so the head looks toward the ceiling and your back rolls to the floor behind you a bit. So you're rolling on the floor, noticing how the left ribs make a change in contact with the floor, noticing how your pelvis is rolling backward and forward a little bit, how your shoulder and your back is rolling toward the floor behind you and rolling in front of you a bit. So that the arm and the leg rotate together inward and outward. Rest on your side, bring the arm and leg down, and then roll onto your back and rest on your back. And resting on your back, observe differences here. Observe what change there is in the connection you make with the floor. Are you a little more symmetrical as you lie here? Get a sense of that. How about your breathing or the sensation in the chest, the upper back? How do the shoulders settle on the floor? Is there a, a more distance in the low back in the floor or in the space behind the knees or the ankles. Notice how you lie on the floor. Is something a little more comfortable? When you're ready, roll to your side. Bring yourself up to sitting. Notice if there's a difference in your ability to sit vertically, in your ability to sit with your pelvis connected to the floor. Is it a little different? Maybe it's a little easier. And then eventually bring yourself up to standing. So stand up on your feet and observe where is your horizon? Where do your eyes look when you go when you look forward? Where are your eyes looking? Are they looking a little up or a little down? How do you carry the chest? Notice the connection of the feet to the floor. And take it into walking. Walk around. Notice yourself in walking. Maybe turn your head to look a little to the right or to the left as you walk. Sense the movement in your hips, how your arms swing. Observe yourself in walking. Is there some improvement or some difference in your ability to balance yourself over your feet? And maybe there's a difference in the comfort. And thank you very much.